One of the really cool ways of controlling at the switch regarding which ports can talk to other ports is using a technique called private VLANs. I'd like you to imagine a beautiful island, beautiful trees, beautiful sand, beautiful ocean, and there are several people who want to go to this island for a vacation. The first people are very individual, meaning they don't like to socialize with others. And so when they go to the beach, they go to the dock, and then they go to a special part of the beach that's isolated, meaning that person one will never see person two, person two will never see person three, and that's because each one of them is going to go to their own special little space in the isolated area of the island. Now another group of people, maybe they're friends. Maybe this group of people want to go to the island, but they want to be able to see and visit and hang out with each other while they're on the island. So they're kind of like a group of individuals. So in order to accomplish that, they would arrive at the dock at the island, and then they would be placed in what's called a community area for that group. So maybe these are people four, five, and six. And so we have person four, person five, person six, and they can all communicate with each other and see each other while on the island. On the other hand, the individuals who chose the isolated option, they can see no one else. They can't see person four, person five, person six, nor can they see person two or person three because they're in this special isolated portion. However, there is something in common between all of these individuals. They all have access to the port. And because they want to leave the island, that's pretty important, to have access to the port. That lets them off the island to go back where they came from. Well, in the world of switching in a Cisco environment, we have an option called private VLANs that allow us to control what traffic is allowed to be seen between two different ports on a switch. And with private VLANs, we're going to have a primary VLAN, and that is very much like the island. This primary VLAN is going to have an IP subnet associated with it, such as 10.40.50.0/24, and all of the devices that are going to be participating as parts or subsets of this private VLAN are all going to agree on what that subnet range is. And they're all going to have host addresses on that subnet. Now, there is a reason they call it private VLANs, and that's because we have multiple VLANs working together. The primary VLAN is, in this example, 100. And we also have a secondary VLANs. And the secondary VLANs are like subsets or subdomains of the primary VLAN. In this example, we have VLAN 200, 300, 400, and 500. And those are all secondary VLANs. Now, not all secondary VLANs are created equal. There are two types of secondary VLANs. One is isolated and one is a community VLAN. In an isolated VLAN, and you're only going to have up to one at the most isolated VLANs, any ports that are participating in that isolated VLAN, in this case VLAN 200, they will not be able to communicate with any other ports in the private VLAN with the exception of a promiscuous port, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. So going back to our analogy, person one will not be able to talk to person two, three, four, five, or six because they are in the isolated VLAN. They're effectively blocked off from communicating with all the other devices on that switch. Now on the other hand, we have this group of people who wanted to be able to communicate with each other, and that's why we put them into a special secondary VLAN that was set up as a community VLAN. In a community VLAN, all the ports that are associated, in this example it's VLAN 400, all the ports that are associated with that VLAN 400 can communicate with each other as well as with the dock. However, devices connected to ports in a community VLAN cannot communicate with devices outside of their community. For example, they can't communicate with port 1 or port 2 or port 3 because those are not part of the same community. Now, the exception to the rule is there is a special port called the promiscuous port in the primary VLAN that all devices can connect to, and they need to be able to communicate with that port because that's very likely where the default gateway is going to be for that subnet. And that brings us down to port types. An isolated port is a port that's allocated as part of an isolated secondary VLAN. A community port is a port that's been associated with a community secondary VLAN. And a promiscuous port, which is always going to be in the primary VLAN, is a port that will be willing to talk to any other port inside of the private VLAN configuration. It's promiscuous, meaning, hey, I'll talk to anybody. And at the end of the day, the purpose of this is, is to restrict which ports in the same IP subnet are allowed to communicate with each other by our implementation of private VLANs. And what I would like to do is take just a couple moments and show you how to implement this on a Cisco switch. To support private VLANs, we have to basically turn off the features of VTP. And we're going to do that by going into configuration mode and simply saying that we want VTP to operate in 
transparent mode, not as a client, not as a server. And this is the first prerequisite, if you will, for supporting private VLANs. Now on this switch, it was already set to transparent mode, but if we want to validate what mode we're in, we can do a show VTP status just to confirm that it's in transparent mode. Next, let's create a couple of brand new VLANs and we're going to specify in VLAN configuration mode that they are community VLANs. So we'll say private dash VLAN space community in each of the VLAN configuration modes. So VLAN 400 and 300 are going to be secondary VLANs in our private VLAN configuration. We can create as many secondary community VLANs as we need to. However, when it comes to the secondary VLAN of type isolated, we really only need one because any ports that get associated with that isolated VLAN are going to have the ability to go effectively nowhere. So we have 200 customers. They all should go nowhere except for the promiscuous port. We can put all of those users into the same isolated VLAN and they'll all be isolated from each other. So we've created our secondary VLANs type community and type isolated. We also need to create the primary VLAN, which we're going to use VLAN 100. And we'll simply tell it that it's a primary VLAN by using the command private dash VLAN space primary. The next challenge that we're going to address is letting the primary VLAN know all of the secondary VLANs that are associated with it. So in VLAN configuration mode for the primary VLAN, VLAN 100, we're going to use the command private dash VLAN association and then the list of all the secondary VLANs. So here I've specified that VLANs 200, 300, 400, 500 are all going to be secondary VLANs. VLAN 300 and 400 are going to be community VLANs. VLAN 200 is an isolated VLAN. And VLAN 500 had previously been configured as another community VLAN. Next, we're going to go ahead into interface configuration mode and tell the individual ports which VLANs they're going to go ahead and participate in. And let's start off with the promiscuous port that's in the primary VLAN, and we're going to use interface gig 0 slash 11. And we're going to say switch port mode private dash VLAN and the keyword promiscuous, which tells the switch that this port should be willing to communicate with any port in any secondary VLANs. We're also going to give this port specific instructions regarding what the primary VLAN number is and what the secondary VLANs are. And we're going to do that with the command switch port space private dash VLAN mapping and then the primary VLAN number first space and then followed by a list of the secondary VLANs. So that takes care of our promiscuous port in the primary VLAN. Let's go ahead and add a couple of ports, let's say gig 0 slash 12 and 13 to the isolated VLAN. To do that, we're going to do switch port mode private dash VLAN host, and that's half the battle. Now they know they're going to be host ports. And the second part is we're going to tell these individual ports the number of the primary VLAN, that's the first number we're listing, followed by the secondary VLAN that we want them to participate in. So the 100 right here specifies the primary VLAN, and 200 specifies the VLAN that these ports are going to be associated with. And because VLAN 200 is an isolated VLAN, these two ports will not have any access to any other ports in the isolated VLAN, nor will they have access to any other ports in any other community VLANs. However, they will have access to the promiscuous port gig 0 slash 11, so they can communicate with whatever is on that port. Hopefully, it's a default gateway for them to use to get off of that local subnet. And we're going to use that similar treatment to add ports into a community VLAN. Same exact syntax, except for we're going to go ahead and specify a community VLAN, like VLAN 300, instead of the isolated VLAN, such as 200. So for ports 14 and 15, we'll use the command switch port mode private dash VLAN host, and then we'll specify private VLAN host host association, the primary VLAN space, and then the secondary VLAN that we want these ports to participate in. So 300 here is our secondary VLAN, the community VLAN. So if there's two devices connected to ports 14 and 15, they would be able to communicate with each other on that same subnet. The switch would allow it, and they would also be able to communicate with whatever's hanging off of gig 0 slash 11. That's where the promiscuous port is. We'd also want to make sure that those interfaces are up, that they're not shut down if we want them to work. So we'll go ahead and bring them out of a shutdown state. And then, of course, we'd want to verify our work. And one way we can do that is with a show VLAN space private dash VLAN. And that should show us our private VLAN configuration with all the ports that are associated with those VLANs. I had a great time. And I'm glad you joined me for this micro nugget. I hope this has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.